Welcome to a Knauer Academy video tutorial on Knauer HPLC columns and column selection and here especially on the topic analysis of proteins and peptides. Maybe you are already familiar with Knauer columns and you know that they can be split up into three major families and today we are concentrating here on the HPLC of proteins and peptides and this is done with white pore silica gel based phases. So what do we have to know when we're talking about these columns? So typically when we talk about white pore silica gel, we mean a material that is based on a silica gel with 300 angstrom pores. So the pore size is here defined by this silica gel. But you have to know a lot more about it. So the silica gel is defined of course by the support itself. So here always a silica gel has a metal content. If you want to know everything about the gel and get the selectivity, these are the most important parameters. So metal content, also the particle shape, I already told you about the pore size, and the specific surface, what is really linked to the pore size, but it is also an important parameter. And here the pore size is really important. So remember 300 angstrom pores is the typical when we talk about white pore silica gel. But also the modification that is now brought on this bare silica gel is really important. So you have to know also these characteristics to get every information on the separation that you can get. So here the modification defines the type of the phase of course and also the end capping. You have again Mod modification also has influence on the pore size. You can imagine if you bring more modification, longer chains on your silica gel, pores get smaller. Also the chemistry of the modification defines the separation mechanism and therewith also the carbon content is really important. But for these white pore silicas that are typically used in a very specific field, the type of phase is important and again the pore size is really important. But all of these in the end define the selectivity. So everything works together to get the selectivity of the column. But why do I have to use white pore silica gel? I already told you pores are bigger, but why? So when you analyze a small molecule via the packing material that is shown here, and this should be a packing material with a smaller pore size, for example, 100 angstrom. This is typical for the analysis of smaller molecules. So here the molecule can get perfectly into your pores. It's no problem. And it can get out again. And this mechanism is needed. So the penetration of the pores is needed to get a retardation of your molecule because the interaction between the packing material and the molecule can only occur really good when the molecule has access to these pores. Now imagine you have this larger biomolecule and you are using the same material as for the small molecule. This can't get in your pores, it's just too big. So it has no access to the small pores and therewith you get a size exclusion of the molecule. Size exclusion means it has no access to these pores, it is not retarded by this silica gel and it will elude in your dead time of your system because the column is not able to retard it in any way. So this is why you need these white pores. But okay, now you know the silica gel support, but which modification do you use? Typically, we are using different reversed phase modifications for the analysis of peptides and proteins. And this is again somehow related to the particle sizes you are analyzing. So if you're having biomolecules as an analyte that are at a size from 2000 to 5000 Dalton, 2000 Dalton is here the breaking point. If they are smaller than 2000 Dalton, you can still use the classical silica gels with these small pores. If it's bigger than 2000 and up to 5000, we recommend that you use a C18 modification of this 300 angstrom pore material. Here you have perfect access to these pores and these molecules are separated well on these columns. But if your molecule gets bigger, so you have bigger molecules, 
bigger than 5,000 Dalton and up to 20,000 Dalton, you see this won't get into this pore anymore because the C18 chains are really taking a lot of space in this pore. So here, this is perfectly suited for a C8 modification of our white pore silica gel. And if the biomolecule gets bigger, you can imagine what happens. So we say up to about 100,000 Dalton, you can use the C4 modification of the white pore silica gel. So just keep in mind, when you're having larger molecules, or the larger these molecules get, the larger the pores have to be. You can still use the same silica gel support, but the C chains brought on here have to be shorter, so the remaining pore is shorter. The separation mechanism that occurs here now for your biomolecules is a really easy one, so it's not so difficult as in other application areas. Basically, you have first a step of absorption of your proteins near the column head, so the top of the column, and here you're typically using aqueous mobile phases, often some buffers, but really large amount of water in it. And then in a second step, you desorb the proteins, so it's a desorption and elution of the proteins from the column head. And to reach this, you just increase the organic concentration of the mobile phase. So it's a small gradient you are running typically, and normally not so much of the organic content is needed just to flush proteins out again. So here you have really most often not so complicated methods. Yeah, and this was a brief overview for our white pore silica gel columns for protein and peptide analysis. Whenever you want to learn more about HVLC columns, you're invited to browse th through our web pages at knauer.net and watch here some more Knauer Academy videos. And if there are still questions remaining, please don't hesitate to write an email to us at columns at knauer.net.